Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Today I'm going to be painting earth gazers and I'm sipping on some peach tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright so for my materials today I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, Mars black, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, fire red, and deep yellow. And of course you can switch those up if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm gonna be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number two bright synthetic brush and I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I might call these small, medium and large or I'll just call them out by name as I use them. And of course you can switch those up. If you're painting along with me, you're probably going to want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually, like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we are painting a base coat onto our canvas. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm going to use my number two bright to pre-mix two custom colors. So the colors I'm using in this step are white, blue, black, and brown, and I'm going to be creating a dark blue to use as the base for my sky and a gray color to use as the base for my moon surface. <laughs> so I have pre-mixed both of my custom colors on my palette so you can see where I'm headed. And I'll show you how I got there. So this is going to be my custom blue, which I'm going to call dark blue. How I achieved this is a lot of my ultramarine blue, a touch of black, and an even smaller touch of white. So what I'm doing is I'm using the black to darken it, and I'm using the black and the white combined as a gray color to desaturate my blue. So this is where I'm headed with it. This is going to be a nice color for the sky. When I start painting it on the sky, it will look lighter because it's going to have a white background behind it, but we'll, we'll get it to be a nice deep dark sky color. But this is where I'm headed to start. So my gray color that I'm going to use as the um, foundation for my moon surface is right here. This is a... a, a is almost like a tan color, but I'm gonna call it gray because um, I did use a lot of black and white in it. So the, co the colors in it are mostly brown, and then I'm using a little bit of black and a, and a little bit of white. So the black and white is about equal uh, quantities to each other, and then the brown is a little bit more. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a medium tone warm gray color and I can use this as my base co coat for the, for the moon surface. So there we have it. Those are my two custom colors. So my sky is going to come down a little bit less than halfway down my canvas. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm taking my large bristle brush, I'm gonna put a tiny bit of my uh, dark blue on my brush. 
I'm going to find myself about the halfway point on the left hand side of my canvas which is about here and then I'm going to go up from that about an inch just give myself a little bit of a tick mark and then on the right hand side I'm going to do the same thing and I want it at about the same height so I'm going to use my brush as a measuring tool so I'm going to take it from I mean you could really do it whatever whatever way works for you so mine um, ironically just kind of meets this little dip in my brush here so I'll just go over to the other side of my canvas measure put my finger there as my marker and then just make another dot this will just stop me from going farther than that with my sky and then I'm just going to load my brush and I'm going to paint it on the sky on with just using a left to right brush stroke I don't need anything fancy right now. We're going to add all the fancy stuff at a, in a future step. But this is where I was um, mentioning that it's going to look a little bit lighter at the moment because we haven't added um, too much darkness. Well, it's on that light or white base. Um, but I, want, I wanted to start it this way to use that lighter base as a benefit as I'm building my sky. So our sky is going to have some atmospheric dimension in it, which we'll put in in a future step. But using that white background right now to kind of keep some of this, especially down at the bottom, on a little bit lighter side than what we're going to have at the top. It's just a different, it's a easy way to kind of use that base as a benefit. So um, once I've got the paint on, I'm just going to go left to right with a light pressure and this gives me a nice um, even coat. It's okay if it's streaking right now, that's going to happen and I plan for it with my second step. I have a little crumb in there, <laughs> a little pink crumb. Um, so just know that it's okay if it's not perfect and down at the horizon we do not need a perfect horizon because this is a landscape so you only really kind of need a perfect horizon when you're talking about oceans that's gonna have that really crisp line going across so now that i've got that on i wash and dry my large brush and i'm going to go in for my for my uh, gray color and i'm just going to go right over that horizon line with a light pressure. So this way they start to blend a little bit. I don't need them to blend 100%. Boy, I've got little, I must have had um, something, an unclean palette or something. I've got little crummies everywhere today. Um, so I'm starting this transition from the land to the sky with just a soft um, kind of blend like that. And then the whole bottom of my canvas is going to be this gray color and again yours doesn't have to be exactly the same gray as mine the gray will cover much better than that blue will so if you you know if you're new to painting and you're and you're watching what's happening and saying wow this gray i can't see through it but i can see through the blue that's because we have good opacity in the gray which means there's a lot of white and and black in it which are very are colors that cover very well so that's going to allow you to have nice coverage with the gray as a there's another little crown we're gonna have fun with these guys today um, and it, so it allows you to have some good coverage so don't be alarmed if the gray is covering better than the blue and then again I'm just gonna go back and forth left to right to make sure that I have it all um, hit pretty well and leveled out and then I'm going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the sky and the stars. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm going to use are my dark blue, white, and black. I will be putting little drifting clouds on later, and we're going to put... Um, a bright light kind of on the horizon. We're going to put the earth off in the distance, but right now I just want to get the, the sky itself and any little stars in the sky that I want to do. So I do recommend that your canvas is dry before we start this step. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using um, predominantly that dark blue color. I'm going to all for the majority of it, but I'm going to use it with black at the top 
and with white at the bottom. So I'm going to create this gradient and then I'll show you a fun technique to splatter on a couple of stars. So I'm going to start with my dark blue plus a touch of black on my brush. The black can really take over so you don't need a ton on there. And then I'm just going to go back and forth left to right to give myself this nice kind of dark atmospheric dimension up here. If you want to bring that down, like I feel I want to bring that down just a little bit further, you can pick up a little bit more of the dark blue plus another touch of the black if you want this darkness to maybe come down just a little bit further. I'm not using heavy pressure on my brush right now, um, so this way the, the um, paint is going to really have good coverage. And I'm using kind of a crisscross left to right type of a brush stroke to um, give it this soft appearance. So right now I'm just picking up more of my uh, dark blue and you'll see as it dries, as it, because it's more concentrated on its layers, like it's darker here than it is here because it's thicker, the paint is thicker. So when this dries, it's going to be dark as well. Um, or as dark as this, if not maybe a little bit darker. And then I'm just making sure that I have it all the way over in through here. And again, right now I'm not picking up any more black. I'm just picking up my, my dark blue, making sure that I have a nice second coat on the majority of this um, sky. And as I'm doing this crisscross, I'm kind of like lifting it off the canvas and that's allowing for um, no stopping marks from my brush to be evident. So again, just more of my dark blue, allowing for this to integrate with the darkness up at the top. So once I get down towards that horizon line, I am bringing my dark blue all the way down there, but once I've got the paint fully down there, I'm going to start introducing a little bit of white because I don't want this to go really super light down here, but I do want there to be a little bit of lightness. So now I'm picking up white plus my dark blue. So white plus my dark blue, about equal parts of both. And then I can um, just kind of put this right down at the horizon line like this. And I'm going right into that gray. Um, underneath it, which is totally fine. That's just going to allow it to, um, when I finish off that land area, it'll look nice and natural. So a uh, dark blue plus a little bit of white on my brush to bring this down in through here. And I'm again, I'm just overlapping it a little bit into that land. So pretty subtle gradient down here at the bottom, but if you want yours more dramatic, you could certainly add more lightness. But again, we've got a light source that will be um, taking up a good portion of that bottom area. So once I've got that on, if you want to add stars, because it's a galaxy, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my brush it doesn't have to be super clean, but just the majority of that blue and black off of there. And then I'm going to touch my brush in my white. And then I'm going to dip my brush in my water a little bit and tap it off on my paper towel. So I have water in my bristles and a little bit of white paint at the end. Then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, you're going to get messy if you do this. <laughs> I'm going to take and I'm going to kind of squeeze my bristles right here. And then I'm going to take my finger and flick it like this. So just so you can get a little kind of evidence of what I'm doing. So I'm flicking it like this. And that's giving me a whole bunch of little tiny stars. I'm doing this now because I want my, I don't want them to be in front of my earth because to me the stars are farther in the galaxy than the earth. They're also farther in the galaxy than the clouds I'm going to be putting on there. So I'm allowing for these stars to be where they need to be in my atmosphere. So if I painted them after the clouds, it wouldn't make sense to me. Or if I painted them when the land is on there, then they would look like snow. So I need to put them in the proper spot. So this is where I'm putting mine. So once you've got that done, I'm going to be um, what are we going to do for the next step? I feel like I want to use my, um, my dro um, I think I want to use this same brush for the next step, my large bristle brush, so you can wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the clouds in the atmosphere and we're going to paint the 
first layer of the moon surface and probably start the little bright sunny area too. So I'm going to be using my large bristle brush to paint. The colors I'm using are white, yellow, red, uh, ultramarine blue, and gray. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm going to be doing for the clouds, I'm going to be using mostly white, ultramarine blue, and maybe a little bit of red. And then on my surface of the moon, I'm making a custom color. Um, I'm not quite sure what to call this. I'm going to call it tan because I called the other one gray, and this one is using um, a little bit more it looks more tan. I mean, it's kind of like a muted mauve. If you're from the 80s, you would know what that means. It's like a pinkish brownish color. So I'm started, I'm going to show you how to make that. I'm calling it tan again, <laughs> this tan color here. How I achieved this was I used my gray and I added a touch of red and white to it. So red and white. So I'm in essence adding pink to my gray color and this is going to give me this really nice muted um, I don't want I'm not even going to call it red I'm not going to call it pink it's just tan with a that steers a little bit towards the reddish side um, this is going to look great and give us a lot of textural element on the um, on the moon surface Oh, and I'm using black too. I didn't say I was going to use black. So I'm going to put in place like my dark areas where I'm going to want my moon mountains to go. Um, and then we'll put in and moon rocks and stuff. And then we'll put in some light area kind of in that middle section to where the sun is. And again, this is just the base coat or the first step to it. So we'll do more defining stuff later. So once I've got my custom tan created, I'm going to go right into my, um, did I say dark blue too? Dark blue as well. <laughs> dark blue and black. Uh, so I'm using almost all my, all my colors except for brown, I guess. Um, so I'm going to take my large brush. I'm going to make sure it's pretty dry. I don't want a lot of moisture on it. So if you just washed it, just give it a good squeeze in your paper towel. I'm going to start with ultramarine blue. Just a teeny tiny touch to start my cloud formation. So I just want this to look atmospheric. So that means I don't want it to, for me, I don't want these to be super heavy. I know my blue, my ultramarine blue, will be transparent. So I'm going to be able to see some of these stars through that blue. And then I'm just kind of working it around. Again, I'm just using my ultramarine blue at the moment. I will introduce a little bit of white into it in a second and a little bit of red. So my earth is going to go over here. I don't really need to do much over there. I'm going to now pick up a tiny bit of red with my ultramarine blue. So just a teeny tiny bit of both on my brush at the same time and just kind of work this in. It's going to look perp have a little bit of a purpley type of effect. And once I've got that on there, this is when I'm going to start to, in a second, add my um, white into the equation. But I caution you when it comes to the white to be very mindful of just having a teeny tiny bit on your brush. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my ultramarine blue. And I, I don't know if you can even catch this, but I've only got dots of white on my brush right now. And you'll see why, because it's just super powerful. And I just want it to be really, really subtle. So that's why you can even just tap it off on your brush. I just want these really um, subtle kind of clouds to drift by. But if you wanted yours more, you could certainly put more on it than me. But I'm just, I kind of want my other stuff to take center stage. So as I'm doing this, I'm just being mindful of how much I'm doing. And if you do too much, you can always revert back to starting that galaxy with your um, base coats and then just building it up. Oh, that, see, that was too much. I was talking and not paying attention. So before that dries, just kind of wipe it away, <laughs> wipe my brush off, pick up a little bit more of my ultramarine blue to counteract that. And now we're going to have a bigger light spot in the sky than we had anticipated. Um, so I'm going to wash my brush because I don't want that much light in there. You get to watch me 
correct myself here because I, I, I can't see my stars underneath. So I want to kind of loosen this up and just lift some of it off. There we go. Because I want to see my stars. <laughs> if you don't want to see your stars, that's fine. You can go with it. Um, but I want to see my stars. So I wanted to get some of that off. There we go. That makes me happy. And then once I've got that, um, I'm going to move down into my ground or my moon surface. And again, I'm hardly using any paint and I'm really using just a light touch so that way it allows for me to um, see all that stuff behind it. So I'm gonna have my light source in through here. I don't really have any paint on my brush so I'm just gonna pick up a tiny bit of white. I want mine a little bit to the left of the center so if this is the center, I'm gonna put it just right in through here. I'm gonna put just a small light area in through here wipe my brush off. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of red and yellow, just a teeny tiny bit on the tip of my brush and just kind of allow for a light area on the exterior and just uh, blend it out. So something like this, letting it go into that sky. So again, just letting it blend out into that sky. I'm going to pick up a little bit more white, yellow, and red. All three colors, just a teeny tiny bit on my brush and just kind of pull it out on this horizon on both sides. So I'm kind of, cr I'm crossing over where the um, land meets the sky with a very light touch to my brush. I'm gonna put a tiny bit more white in this area in through here, very light touch to my brush and allowing for that to start. We'll finesse it a little bit more if we need to later, but right now that's just gonna get that started. And now I'm gonna start uh, with whatever dirtiness is on my brush right now. I'm just gonna kind of bring some lightness down into the center of this um, surface of the moon. You can pick up more of the white, yellow, and red if you want a little bit more glow on this, um, on the surface in through here. So think of it kind of like a peachy type of color that's allowing for um, the effects of that light source to just kind of bounce throughout this, um, throughout the landscape. So once I've got that, just put a little bit more of the red in there so it's not too yellowy. Um, so once I've got this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm going to start introducing that um, pinkish, tan color that we created, that light brown tan color. Um, so I wash my brush, I'm picking up that new color that we created, and I'm just gonna uh, put some of this in through the middle. I am gonna have some dark moon, rock, mountain areas, but I really want this color to just kind of be sporadic throughout the land. I'm not doing the whole thing because I want, um, that original gray to also be evident. So this is just something that's going to illuminate um, the, the surface. I don't even know if it's called moon dirt, <laughs> dust. I'm not quite sure what, what the technical term is for moon, the, the substance that the moon is made out of. Um, so once I've got that, now I'm gonna start putting in dark areas for where I want my moon mountains to go. So I'm not gonna wash my brush. This is where I'm gonna use my dark blue at, to start for the mountains back farther away from us. And then when I move closer to us, I'll be using my dark blue plus black. So again, I'm really just kind of saying, okay, well, I think I'm gonna want some mountains in through here. So I'm gonna use that dark blue to create um, these kind of little pointy tips to the mountains. I am gonna, again, in a future step, make these more, um, more realized, fully realized, so they don't, uh, so they have a little bit more substance to them. But right now, I'm taking that dark blue and I'm saying, okay, well, maybe I want a little um, mountain range in through here. So I'm going to put the dark blue up at the top. Maybe I want one over here on the horizon. And I'm doing kind of jagged, pointy um, tips to the tops of the hills or mountains, but you, and then I'm just kind of diffusing it down and out. Um, you could certainly make yours more of uh, anything. You could have little ones in through here, in through here. As I get down about this far, this is where I'm going to start picking up a little bit of black, 
with my dark blue. So uh, we're seeing the dark side of these um, of these hills, mountains, whatever you want to refer to them as. So as I'm doing this, I know that uh, these these areas that I'm painting right now are are the silhouetted dark sides of them. And I'm going to be using a different brush later that will help to make these look um, more realistic, if you will, on this fun, <laughs> you know, non-realistic painting. But you can certainly, as you're going through your process, if you want, you know, if you want yours to be like uh, rolling hills, you could certainly do that. You could have this be a different planet. It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be the moon. It could be, you know, it could be Saturn. It could be Mars. It could be whatever, whatever you want it to be. That's going to be up to you and your imagination where you want to um, bring this galaxy style painting to. I'm putting a whole bunch over in through here. And you can see I'm leaving some of the um, lighter areas as well. That's going to um, allow me to build a little bit more um, E simpler detail um, on top of it as I as I finesse it into a fully realized um, landscape but right now this is just kind of giving me some some places to start again I'm kind of doing lots of little pointy type of marks and then down at this bottom area my my people are going to be sitting on a bench in through here so maybe I just have a couple of areas that have some darker marks to them maybe there's some little rocks and stuff there's going to be a big shadow down in through here so maybe i just kind of pop in just wiggle my brush a little bit to give myself a couple of little darker areas um, and then down at this bottom back side i want it to be a little bit darker than up here so i'm going to pick with my dirty brush i'm going to pick up some of that um, tan color and this is going to give me some darkness back here without it going black um, and it's going to allow me to have a little bit more atmospheric dimension on this on the surface of the um, on the surface landscape in through here um, i feel like that should probably be even darker i'm actually going to add a touch more red and black to this little um, mixture so i have a darker version in through here so I'm just making a little bit darker of a version so because I feel like I want yeah some of these guys to be a little bit darker there we go that that makes me happy and then um, once I've got this done I am going to be switching brushes to my um, to my bright brush for the next step but now that I've got this awesome color on my brush I'm like I want to keep painting now <laughs> um, I really dig this uh, little new mixture that I made so I might just kind of sprinkle it in these little guys in through here and then I'm sure I'll use it again later but that's looking pretty good to me so I'm going to call it at this point on this step and I'm going to um, be using my bright brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our light source and the moon surface. I'm using my number two bright brush. You could certainly use a combination of different brushes to get this done, but um, I think it's gonna, I, I'm gonna like it for creating the, um, the, the detail on the mountains and finessing um, the smoother surface that I have in through here, as well as creating my little light burst. So I'm gonna be using white, yellow, red, my tan, um, my dark blue, white, I already said white, <laughs> and maybe some black. And if I go into any other colors, I'll let you know, because I might go into brown too, but I'll let you know. I'm going to start with a little bit of white. I'm going in for my light source first. So I'm really just going to um, amplify this light area in through here, putting my white on right in the middle and then I fade that white out. So I softly kind of just as it's drying, just kind of push it out and manipulate it. So it in essence kind of gradates away from that um, nucleus of the, of the bright spot in through there. 
So once I've got that created, then I can say, well, that's kind of drying a little bit because I don't want to um, mess with it too much while it's drying. I can finesse the edge of the land. So this is where I'm going to be using, again, a combination of my white, yellow, and red. You can do any kind of combination that you want. I think I want mine to just kind of be pretty bright where it is coming, um, kind of hitting the top of the, the, the land surface. So I'm just using a little bit of yellow, red, and white. And if you want to blend it out, you certainly could. What Again, whatever is visually appealing to you, this is just a fun painting that you get to create the vibrancy in it. So once I've got that established, I can, um, if, if this light area is pretty dry, which mine is not, so let me, let me add more lightness to these little land pieces. So white, uh, yellow, and red, and I just kind of mush them together on my palette so they, they're in my bristles. Um, I feel like I want to add some, um, some lightness to some of this land in front of the um, light source. So again, it's rocky, cratery moon surface. So I'm leaving some of the darker areas that are going to give it a little bit of um, the visual information that maybe those are little pieces of land um, or little pockets of rocks or whatever. So just kind of allowing, looking for some dark spots and kind of leaving them and just giving myself some bright stuff down this middle. And again, any kind of combination of the lightness, whatever is working for you, you could even bring some in down in through here. So again, white, red, and yellow, allowing for myself to um, bring some lightness, that's a little bit too much yellow, um, some lightness into the land in through here. And again, center of the surface is pretty, would make sense, um, but you can certainly do wherever you want. As I'm coming down in through this area, I'm, I'll go back up to that sun, but I'm having fun doing this. As I come into this area, I've got to be mindful where my people are going to be. So I'm going to have my people in through here, and I want it to feel like they're kind of sitting on a ledge of sorts or on the exterior of a crater, and maybe the crater is in through here. So I'm going to um, use those lighter colors and allow for a big kind of light area on the ground um, inside that crater. So again, oh, I'm going to, I'm using some of that um, light tan too. So white, light tan, yellow, red. You could certainly pick up your larger brush or add a little bit of water onto your brush in order to get these colors to kind of blend out. Um, but I want mine to look rough like it is um, cratery <laughs> and has texture on it. So that's why I'm allowing myself to not use a bigger brush and um, just add these, um, these lighter tones. So I'm making it feel like that interior is part of, um, of a crater. So again, I'm kind of switching back and forth between white, my tan, yellow, and red, just um, intermingling them all on my brush at the same time. There we go. That looks pretty good. I feel like I want to back this little section up just a little bit in through here. There we go. So I'm going to go back up to my um, to my light source, washing my brush. I'm going to put a little bit more uh, white on my brush, make sure that's dry enough for me. I wanted this to be pretty bright, so that's why I kind of am tackling it. Um, kind of back to back like this and then just tapping my color out. I'm now picking up a tiny bit of yellow and you're going to see how vibrant this makes this exterior of this light source look. So something like that and then I can just blend that out. So if you want your light source to really have a nice powerful impact um, creating that uh, kind of yellowish hue right around it will help to do that and that's where I um, lightened up the background first and then came back on top of it with a little bit of the yellow and that'll just give you that extra vibrancy and you can bring out some yellow and red and the white if you want the the reddish glow to be a little bit more you can certainly add to that as well but I think I'm digging mine the way that it is so I don't really want to mess with it too much more uh, just kind of 
make sure that's blended as much as I want. And then I can finish the, the land. So the land, again, I the dark is the back side of it. Anywhere where I have light areas that I'm picturing to be lit up by my light source. So in my light areas, I can use that tan plus white, maybe a little bit of yellow, and I can say, okay, well, here's a light spot. Let me just kind of enhance that, and then I can go into my dark blue and I'm really just kind of looking to smooth out any of these areas that um, that I feel look unfinished. So I'm going to be using those lighter colors in the light pockets in order to make it look like um, that sand. I think of it kind of like a sand dune type of a thing. So mostly that tan plus white will um, create like in through here. I can take that tan plus white and just give myself these little upward type of motions on the side that the sun or that light source is at and that's going to create the illusion of these um, little sand duny um, areas or you can have like a flat spot um, just past there that'll look like a little um, just leveled area so and then just kind of take these light colors and of course it doesn't have to be the same light colors all throughout the land as you're coming back towards here you can use some of that um, darker version but I'm gonna right now just kind of stick to that um, uh, the tan plus a little bit of white and just give myself um, these upward type of um, diagonal marks to go up the little hills and then at the flat spot in the surface um, just kind of going left to right. So I'm watching where I have my light spots and dark spots and just kind of rolling with those. If I'm in a dark area, like in through here where I feel like the dark blue, I need another layer, I can certainly do that. Like I can put another layer of my dark blue over on this side. So you're really just kind of building these in whatever um, manner or visual way looks looks good to you. You can even pick up a little bit of black. If I felt like a little bit on this dark side could have a little bit more black, I can certainly take that or maybe put a little bit in these little crevices. I Again, I'm doing mine pretty um, much like vertical peaks, but you could, of course, make yours into, you know, softer rolling hills if you wanted to. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of my dark blue to this guy in through here, making sure that this looks pretty good in through here, and then um, maybe a little bit of my dark blue plus black. You can always add more of your darkness. So if you're finding you want additional little rocks, this is this is where you can add whatever you want. Um, so I'm now flipping back and forth. I just picked up some of that tan color in through here. I feel like this needs to be kind of um, finessed a little bit and I'm just kind of watching and I'm really just doing a second layer on everything um, giving myself the freedom to just kind of let it build itself um, with what happened on that first go around um, so if I want a little kind of edge to here I just picked up a little bit of my dark blue I can inch I can mix put the dark blue on top of the black and that's going to give me another um, color in through here. I'm just kind of flipping sides over here. A little bit of dark blue at the bottom of this guy with the black at the top. That makes that look nice. And again, I'm just kind of rolling with whatever I had created initially and just finessing it a little bit more with the same colors um, while we have the addition of that darker version of the red bow. I think I'm doing pretty good here. I'm picking up a little bit more of my dark blue just to kind of get these guys to come out of their edges. And of course you can, you know, build more rocks. I, if I want a little bit, this guy in through here doesn't look finished to me. So I can kind of take this point, this flatter brush and give it a little bit more substance. I can bring little pieces as if these are just, you know, little 
additional rocks or rolling texture, whatever you want to imagine them to be is up to you. And you can keep adding to it, subtracting from it. I'm picking up a little bit more black. So if I want little additional rocks and stuff over here, I definitely want a whole bunch of little rocks and stuff um, where I've got my, my um, people are gonna be sitting. So this is, Think of these as the, again, the backside of the rocks and they're pretty silhouetted or the, te the backside of the texture. So just have fun with however you want to create this. Um, I'm looking for some of my dark spots in here and you just make it as, um, as textured as you want, as finished as you want. If you want yours to be very um, impressionistic, leave out all the, the fine-tuned detail. If you want there to be more detail, like I just picked up some of that light color, so this is going to look rockier. Um, that's, those are going to be your type of decisions um, that you get to make if you you know how how detailed you want yours to be i feel like i want there to be a little bit more texture in through here and then once you've got it into a place that is pleasing to you i think i want just a little bit more up in through here so this is going to be that uh lighter that tan plus a little bit of white i feel like i want a um, little extra lightness in through here just to make sure that these guys look maybe like there's a couple of little mountains so i'm finding the light spots and i'm adding more lightness to them so it's making those dark spots look like they're maybe little mountains off in the distance so you can of course keep keep fiddling with it as much as you want and then once you've got this into a place that is visually appealing to you we're going to be using um our drawing utensil for the next step i'm not going to be able to stop doing this <laughs> I'm having too much fun. Um, I'm going to use my uh, drawing utensil for the next step. So you can as well <laughs> just get this little guy in through here. I think I want this to kind of be out just a little bit further. Okay, that didn't make a difference, but it made me happier because <laughs> that one didn't look finished. So, all right, put this brush away, take out something to draw with, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to draw an outline for our earth gazers, <laughs> so our people and their bench. I'm going to be using my white piece of chalk. You could, of course, use any drawing utensil that's comfortable to you. I'm going to be guiding you through a series of markers. We're going to connect those markers, and by the time we're done, we'll have some nice basic shapes that we'll be able to utilize during the painting in process. I do, again, recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step. So I'm going to guide you to find the center of the bottom of your canvas. So if you left to right, just find the center of your bottom, bottom of your canvas and then come up about a quarter of the way up your canvas. So for me, that's somewhere in, in this vicinity. So if this was halfway, this would be my horizon's a little bit above my halfway point. This would be about halfway between that and the bottom of my canvas. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the left of that marker. I would say maybe about a half of an inch and then up just a tiny, tiny little bit. So somewhere in here is where my first marker is gonna go. I'm gonna draw a horizontal line, but it's gonna, that's about an inch tall but it's gonna be a, a little bit um, diagonal going out the bottom. So just a little diagonal like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come all the way to the left-hand side of my canvas at about the same height. So if you, you can take anything as a measuring tool to see how high you did that one. Let me just make sure I've got it correct here. Hold your um, brush at that height and then come over until you're about maybe an inch and a half away from the left edge of your canvas. Some, so for me, it's somewhere about here. And then what I'm gonna do from this marker, I'm gonna go up about a quarter of an inch, quarter to a half of an inch. So what I just did is give, gave you a little bit, the corner, the left corner of the bench, we're making the bench right now, is a little bit higher than the right corner. I'm gonna do another, 
um, hor or vertical line like this one, only it's a little shorter than this one. So if this one is an inch, I'm going to do this one about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch at a similar angle. So something like that. And then all I need to do is connect these top two corners and the bottom two corners with a horizontal line, but it will end up being slightly diagonal. So the right hand side is just a little bit bigger than the left hand side to give us a tiny bit of perspective on that bench. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this bottom right hand corner about a half of an inch at the same angle. So something like that. Then I'm going to do a diagonal angle that's going to be about another, let's see, I think it's about an inch. Let me just, that one's an inch. Yep. So my diagonal line here is about an inch as well. So it kind of meets up um, with that bottom corner in through there. And then on the left hand side, I'm, we need an angle that's similar to this, only inside this corner a little bit. So I'm going to come in here maybe about another, maybe three quarters of an inch, give myself a diagonal line that's a little shorter than that one, and then I can connect these bottom two. So this gives you the seat portion of the bench. So something like that. So this angle should be similar to that angle. Now what I can do is I can put my people on my bench. So this is the seat, that's the back. So I'm going to do my female first. She's going to be, um, if like this is about halfway uh, in my bench, her, her shoulder is maybe about an inch higher than that. So I'm going to give myself a little marker where I want her shoulder to be. I can um, now take that and just give kind of a rounded shoulder area. So it's maybe about an inch and a half wide. And whenever I think of a female shape, I kind of think of like an hourglass shape. I know her rear end is going to end up at the bottom port, uh, at where the seat of the bench is. So I can right now give her her rear end based on where I know her shoulders are. So something like this, and then curve it up on the sides. And then I just need to meet, give her her side shape. She's sitting, so her waist is going to be um, behind this bench portion in through here. So I'm going to take this and just kind of come down, cinch in her waist a little bit, and then there's her rear end on the left-hand side. Bring this down, cinch it in a little bit, and there's her left-hand side. And the rear end could be as wide or as narrow as you want. It could be wider. I've got mine a little bit wider than the than the. I've got the hips a little bit wider than the shoulders, and then her head. Uh, let me give you another measurement here because I know this is about an inch here. So her head is about an inch tall. So go about an inch above um, her shoulders, and then just give yourself like an oval type of a shape for her head. Her arms, we're not really going to see much of them. So if you, because the bench, you're not really going to see it. Um, but if you felt that you wanted uh, little elbows or something, you can certainly put some elbows in. Her legs, think of this seat part. Her knees are going to come out over that bench. So if I can just imagine her from her hip, her leg would go out like this. Maybe we'd see the bump of her knee in through there, maybe, maybe not, but we definitely are going to see um, her, her, the bottom of her legs underneath here. And they're going to be kind of silhouetted, so I don't really need to do much other than just kind of put these um, rectangular type of shapes in through there, maybe a little part for her foot, but we can bump out a little mark later for that. So he's going to be sitting right next to her. I want him a little bit taller and his shoulders a little bit broader. So if I find her neck and I just go over to the left from there, maybe one, two inches, somewhere in through here, and then up about a half of an inch, so maybe halfway in her head or a third of the way in her head, that's going to be the top of his shoulders. His shoulders are going to be wider than hers, so I'm going to bring his maybe really close to hers over here and I would just kind of measure if you wanted to resemble female and male I can just measure how wide I did hers and make sure I do his a little bit wider and then same thing for his rear end a man is typically going to have broader shoulders than his hips so if I know how wide his shoulders are if I make his hips a little bit more narrow that'll make sense so I'm going to just kind of give his hips 
in through here in his rear end. And again, this is all going to be silhouetted. So, um, and then I can bring down his his shoulder like this, and then bring it in for his rear end. The waist doesn't cinch much, um, so something like that. And then same thing for his arms. If I felt like I'd see his elbow or something like that. You could even put his arm around her, but again, they're gonna be pretty silhouetted, so I, I, don't, I didn't think that was very necessary. And then on this side, maybe something like that. You know, maybe that's his arm resting on his leg or something. And same thing with his lower part of his body. So if I'm seeing him from the side, I might see part of his leg there. This is the back of the bench, but we're going to have little peekaboo slats. So if you felt you could put a bump for his knee in through there, that's great. And then again, down below is going to be his, his, the bottom of his legs, something like that. So I just want to take my, um, my bright, oh, he needs a head. <laughs> Almost forgot to put his head on. <laughs> so I'm going to go, um, let's see, hers is an inch. So his is going to be maybe about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half tall something like that and a man might not have as wide of a looking head because maybe her hair puffs out her head so a, a little bit wider so his is going to be more of like a light bulb type of a shape so something like this and like this and then you don't want his neck to look too narrow so i can take this and then just bring it out in through here like the his collar area and we might even put like a little collar for his shirt on or something so if I take one of my brushes, like my bright brush, and put a little bit of water on it, I can erase some of these guidelines to just kind of show you um, what we, well, that one's not necessary. Actually, I don't really need to erase them because the bench is going to go on behind them. So never mind about erasing my lines. <laughs> we can keep them all there today. Usually I have us erase them because it makes sense to, but today, oh, we need legs on the bench. So I've got a front leg in through here however low you did that if it comes below here then i need to find that same spot on the other corner so something like that and then on the back side of the bench i'm going to have um kind of these more uh, maybe they splay out a little bit so i'm going to do the same thing over here right onto the corner of the bench like that and then that's all i'm going to be doing for this step i am going to be using my bright brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your drawing utensil away, take out a bright brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat for our people, the bench, and earth. I'm using my number two bright brush. The colors I'm going to use are black, white, uh, ultramarine blue, and yellow. I think that's it. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. I might have to go into some of my dark blue, but I'm not sure yet. So what I'm going to do is on my bench, I'm going to be using um, my white paint, just very thin, as a um, as a bright seat, and also some little bright, uh, well, I think just as the seat for now. And then we'll use black as, this, as the base coat for the rest of the bench. And then on my moon, I mean my earth, I'm going to be using my um, yellow, blue, and white to make a green color for the land masses. And then I'll be using my ultramarine blue and white for um, just kind of the silhouette of where we want the earth to be and how um how we're not going to see all of it we're just going to kind of see the left side and it's going to kind of fade off into the galaxy so i'm going to start with my people first i'm going to use a tiny bit of white plus water on my brush so white plus water and i'm doing this just so i i don't need this um bench to be super duper bright bright white um, what I'm looking to do right now is just get some, um, some highlighted kind of, um, um, pieces to the bench. So I'm just making kind of lines going left to right. 
on where the bench portion would be. I'm skipping the um, the legs, and I. But you want to make sure the leg is going to go in front or behind <laughs> on the other side of the seat portion. So I'm just going left to right lines in through here. N once I've got that established, now I can start the silhouette, the black part of the people. So the people are sitting on the other side of the back of the bench, so it would make sense for me to do them first. So I'm just gonna use black paint on my dirty brush. You can model her head whatever way you want. If you want her to look like she's got long hair, you could lessen these two dips where her neck is. If you want her to look like she has short, like a bob type of hairstyle, you can pull it out at the bottom and then just cinch it in for her neck. You can really make it look whatever way you want. We'll put some highlights on it um, in a future step in order to give it a little bit more realistic of a look, but again, you can make it whatever way you want. I think I want to pull this out just a little bit. Give her a little bit more of a hairstyle. If you want her to look like she's wearing a suit, you could uh, make her shoulders look a little bit more squared off. Same thing with him. I feel like I've, I feel like these are almost like scientist people. Like they've made their way to the moon, <laughs> and they are just they're just you know relishing in their victory of making their way to the moon, and they're just watching it. They're gazing at the Earth and its galaxy. So I'm thinking that if they're scientists, business people, perhaps, or or maybe they're investors, <laughs> and they've and they've invested in a great trip to the moon, or Maybe they're just journey journeymen or journey women. So anyways, perhaps they're wearing a suit. Perhaps they're not. Um, once I've got her, I can certainly do him. And of course, make yours whatever. Maybe he's wearing a hat. Maybe this is their their honeymoon and maybe they've got all kinds of fancy stuff. Maybe she's got a you know, some kind of headdress on. The silhouette, when you do a silhouette like this, it's super fun because you can just, as you're painting, you can imagine certain things. Like maybe he's got a, a suitcase next to him and you can do, or a briefcase or something. You can, you can modify and build your story just by adding little kind of little details like that. So these paintings are super fun. Um, to do stuff like that with because you don't really have to worry about the detail of it You're just kind of more concerned about um, getting some sort of believable shape to the silhouette um, So that's looking pretty good in through here. I've got his um, his leg over in through here and You can see as I'm doing this. I knew that that was his leg knee, but I don't really need to too much. I can blend that right into his side, and that's totally fine. Here's his, here's his uh, lay, his feet, and through here. I don't know if I'd see um, his shoes at this angle, but maybe, maybe not. Oh, I need. I missed hers. <laughs> she needs some. She needs some legs too, and maybe she's. You know, if you want her to be wearing high heels or you know moon boots or what, you just imagine whatever you want. So I've got their bodies in, now I want to put the bench on. So the bench goes behind them. So I'm just going to take from here and just give myself a line, watching my other side over here. And don't worry about it, you know, going crooked or anything like that. I'm going to have kind of slats on the back of my um, bench. So that way we can see kind of through it a little bit, but you, you could have it solid. If you wanted to, that's going to be totally up to you. So I'm widening these lines a little bit. And then when I get to the edge of it, I'll just leave a little bit showing. So I'm going to have three slats. So I, that was the top one. I'm going to do the bottom one next. And then um, wherever, whatever kind of space I have for the middle one, I'll do that in a minute. And if you needed to use a different brush, use a different brush. So don't you don't have to always... Um, use the same brush that I'm using. I use the brushes that work well for me, but as you're painting, you might find that this is totally not the right brush for you and that you want something else. So th those are the decisions that you make during your painting process. And then the center one, um, I'm just going to kind of um, do this like this. Oh, see there, I'm going to 
uh, that whole detail that we did on his leg, I'm just painting right over it right now. Because I, I need to. Because if I didn't, it would look funny. Even though I um, put it there on purpose, knowing what it was there for, if there was a little spot of my um, of my bench that prevented that spot from being covered, then, you know, like right now we've got little silhouette of his leg and that's perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the front legs of the bench like this. Front leg right like this. And then the back leg. And if you, uh, the back ones are, they have to, I've got mine going into the bench itself because this is part of the brace of the bench. So I'm going to just bring this down like this. And I do need a line at the bottom of the seat to a black line. So I'm going to put a line down there in a second, which I probably could have done that when I was doing the seat. And I'm making it so it looks like it's just kind of um, uh, disappearing into the moon surface, the moon sand. So that way it looks like this bench has been here a while. <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and do a line um, at the base of their this uh, this bottom area in through here. So just adding a little bit more paint to my brush right now. So I can just pull this all the way across. And again, this is just, we're going to do a, a little detail step to it later. But for my moon, um, oh, I think I'm going to just kind of, I mean, for my um, earth, I'm going to put a little darkness right here too. For my earth, I'm going to uh, wash my brush. I'm going to give you a couple of markers um, so we can have an exterior line to it. I'm going to be using my um, ultramarine blue plus a touch of white on my brush. So I'm going to find myself the, um, the, the top center of my canvas. And then I go about halfway between that and the edge of my canvas. So that brings me somewhere in through here. I'm about an inch to the right of that and down about an inch. That's going to give me my first marker. And then if I go all the way over from here to the right side of my canvas and drop down maybe about an inch, that's going to give, and I'm about maybe three quarters of an inch away from my edge of my canvas. That gives me my mark two. And then my third mark, if I come directly below here, about, I would say maybe about five inches or so, somewhere in through here, and then to the left a little bit, I'm gonna make myself another marker. So I'm gonna connect these three markers in a s partial circle type shape, but I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my brush so that way I can um, fade it into the earth itself. So this is gonna be the exterior left edge of the earth. So I'm gonna take this and just kind of give myself a nice sketchily line, um, allowing myself to get those to connect and then get this to connect over here. If you wanted to or needed to use a round object to just trace around, that would give you a nice circular area. But I'm gonna get this to kind of disappear. So once I've got that exterior kind of outline, I can take the remnants on my brush using kind of a like a circular type of motion and then just kind of get it to dissipate into this um, into the color of the sky these two little dots here if yours are bigger than mine don't worry about that at the minute at the moment because we'll get those to go away i'm going to wash my brush i want to put a little area where i want the um, land mass to look like there is so i need green i'm going to get to that by using <clears throat> yellow blue and a touch of white. So I'm mixing it on my palette right now so you can see how I'm going to get to a green color. You could also do this with the black and the yellow, um, but I'm going to use blue and yellow because that's what I learned in first grade. <laughs> it's my, my easiest go-to make a green color um, with a little bit of white so this way we have um, some a little bit of opacity. So this is my green that I'm starting with and you can make yours very um, exact to the earth's surface, but right now I'm just gonna kinda give myself um, a land area and we'll come back in a little bit and give ourselves um, some more details to it, but I'm gonna just kind of allow myself to have this kind of green type of um, tone as, as the base for, for the land areas. Um, and then once I've got 
that. I'm just going to kind of let it fade out over here. You could certainly put other little spots elsewhere if you wanted to. We're going to put clouds and other atmospheric stuff on the Earth. I keep calling it the moon, so I'm sorry if I keep doing that. Other stuff on the Earth's surface later. Um, but once you've got this done, we are going to be using our uh, number two round for the next step. So you can just get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our people and their bench. I am using my number two round brush. The colors I'm going to use are, excuse me, brown, black, white, yellow, and red. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I'm just going to give a little bit more detail in my bench seat and the, um, and the back of the bench. And then I'm going to give some nice highlight to... Um, the shoulders and the heads. I'm not going to do a whole bunch of detail to it. Um, again, I want the power of these light sources to just kind of put them a little bit in the silhouette. And then I'll add some shadows down below. I feel though I might, I'm going to start with my number two round, but when I get to those shadows, I might move to my number two bright. So be prepared for that too. <laughs> so I'm going to start with my highlights. Um, I'm going to pick up a little bit of uh, brown and white on my brush at the same time. So brown and white is going on my brush at the same time. I'm going to put a nice highlight at the top of my bench, the, um, the backing of the bench in through here. So I'm using brown with it. Um, I could be using yellow, I suppose, but I'm using brown with it just so it, I, if I want to bring any of it a little bit brighter, I still will have that opportunity to do so. So I like to reserve the white, white, white until the the last, um, until I find a moment where I definitely am all the way as white as I want to go, or I, I want to push it that extra little step. So in through here, I'm noticing the background um, on top of the sand is pretty similar in tone to that, the bench. So this is a spot where I would definitely use white um, on here. So you can end up seeing the edge of that bench because the tonal value is very similar from the bench to the sand. Or you could darken up the sand, whatever works for you. So again, still just brown and white. Um, I can use this to uh, increase maybe these little slats if if I felt that it would benefit me to lighten them up, I can certainly lighten them up a little bit. I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot, but that's going to just add to the dimensional element of the bench too. Like there's a little the, that these um, these back pieces have little depth to them, and they're going behind the person, so the person would be shadowing um, the that light area at the top, but if you felt that you wanted to see that, you could certainly do that. Um, on this seat, I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to pick up some black and brown on my brush to, um, I feel I want some little slats in here, so there's black and brown, giving myself the shadowed little um, pieces in between, the sh in between the slats. Not necessary, but if you wanted, again, to push it just a little bit further, feel, this is um, how I'm doing it by just, again, adding little shadows between these slats. So this is just black and brown, um, and taking it however far you want to go is totally up to you. So I need a little bit more on my brush because I'm losing, uh, I didn't have as much paint over on this side. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then maybe one more up on this last one in through here, but you won't be able to see that um, over here. So that looks good. Now I'm going to make sure the front part of the bench is nice and bright. So I'm going to just put white on my, my brush for this little front part because I feel that that sand, moon sand, whatever that is, um, the contrast here will will benefit me. So that looks good. Now I am going to just kind of um, do my highlights on 
these guys. So if I want them to look like they have colored hair, I can use, this is where I can use my brown. Um, so I can use brown uh, with a, just a tiny touch of white. You might feel that you wanna go, I might even go into my yellow um, and or red if I do this and I say, oh, I feel like I want his hair to be more blonde or you know whatever the case may be. So I'm gonna lighten up the edges which I'm doing right now with some brown and white, but more brown than I was using on the bench. So this is definitely a, um, you know, an area where I'm using more brown than white. And of course you can make the hairstyle whatever you want, but again, I'm leaving it pretty silhouetted. Um, so I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot. And then I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint to illuminate the edges even more as if they, the right the right front edge is where I'm putting a lot of that highlight. And again, if you wanted to change the color of the hair, you certainly could. Um, I think that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna approach the suits the same, or the suits, their outfits the same way. See, I got it in my head that they're suits. <laughs> I'm gonna be, um, I think I wanna use a little bit of white. Mm, let's give them blue suits. I'm going white plus my dark blue. I didn't say I was using dark blue, but white plus my dark blue. I'm going to give him some shoulders in through here. Again, I'm not using, um, I'm not bringing this highlight back very far because I want, um, I want it to look like that, that shadow, like it, it, like it disappears back into the shadow behind him. So this is just blue and white. And then I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white to put on the edge, like this, a little bit on that edge, like that. And if you felt that you could get away with um, putting a little bit down the side, go for it. If you want the pants to be blue or to show a little bit of blue, just go the dark blue plus a little bit of white and you can even just put a little sliver of it in through here. If Again, only if you felt that that would benefit you. Same thing with her. If you want them to color coordinate, maybe they work for the same scientist place. <laughs> I'm going to put some blue, dark blue and white on the edge of her shoulders. And then maybe a, a little bit of white just to cap it off like that. And then on their pants, I don't really... I mean, you could do it if you want, but I need more black on their on the back sides here. I just loaded my brush with more black because I'm not. Um, I used it with a little bit of white before, so now I mean a little bit of water, so it's a little bit transparent in some areas. So I'm just making sure that I've got full coverage, and of course you could. I, again, do add whatever you want. If you have a little spot between your person and the back edge of the bench, you'd want to put a little bit of shadow um, to to uh, finish off the bench area. Um, but I don't think I really need to do that on mine because the angle of the light source works for me. So I'm digging that. Let me just put a little bit more. Um, this feels like it's a little unfinished, so we're just coloring that in a little bit more. And then I need shadows on the ground. Um, so if you want, I'm actually going a little bit, sorry, black and white, just to give myself a little, um, the top of the bench here. Just pull it just a little bit behind them. There we go. So you see just a smudge of it. Okay, so there's shadows. I am going to switch to my, um, to my bright brush. Let me just put another layer on their pants and feet in through here, get rid of my, any of my little chalk marks. So my um, my shadow, I'm gonna be doing mostly with um, black and brown, but there might be an area where I feel that the black and the brown doesn't um, spread well or blend well, so I will might use some of that dark or the gray color that we created. Right now I'm just using a little bit of water on my brush to get rid of my chalk marks to see if there's any other uh, things that I needed to do with these, with the people before I move on. So just a little bit of water on my brush is removing those chalk marks. Okay, they, I think they look good. So I'm gonna use my uh, bright brush. I'm gonna, the light source is here and here. So the shadows are gonna come directly from those light sources. Cause I think earth is gonna be a light, a little bit of a light source. Um, so I'm gonna be using a little bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time. I've got um, 
the angle from the from the bench and I love to use a little bit of water on my brush too as my um, liquid um, medium if you will this bench leg comes out like that I'm going to do the um, these longer parts the legs the legs and it's a bumpy surface so it doesn't just have to be a straight line so as I'm doing mine this one goes out just a little bit I'm thinking oh it's a bumpy surface so I don't need it to be just a straight line I can certainly get that um, shadow to bump out over some of the um, some of the texture of the sand or again I'm not sure if it's called sand <laughs> um, but the shadow is going to be the darkest right where it meets the object so it'll be the darkest where it meets the feet it'll be the darkest where it meets the legs of the um, the bench down here this is I'm just going to go a big mass of darkness um, in order to explain the the shadow that meets um, the people's legs and the bench and again I'm going pretty messy because I want the idea to remain that the surface that the ca the shadow is being cast upon is bumpy so that's allowing me to be really free as I'm doing this and I don't want it one solid color so that's why I'm introducing some of the black and brown um, to create this and that looks pretty good to me I'm digging that so once you've got this done we're going to be using the same um, bright brush for the next step so you can and again if you needed any of the gray or the the reddish um, color that um, that we made with the with our um, tan we use the tan red and black or the tan or the gray whatever you feel that um, you might need to get this to, to blend in do it you know you don't have to just put the shadow on and say oh that didn't work uh, uh, I didn't do you know it didn't work out you can always just keep manipulating these surrounding pieces of sand and rocks and stuff like that and you can even put it on top of your shadow um, or intermingle it with the shadow and that'll make it look nice and natural so we're going to use this uh, bright brush for the next step so you can wash it dry it and get ready all right so we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our earth i am using my number two uh, uh bright brush the colors i'm going to use are dark blue ultramarine blue white green yellow red and that might be it so I need or I want my earth to disappear into the atmosphere right now I have stars in my in my earth which is fine because when I go to do all the funner more detailed stuff that'll they'll, they're just gonna disappear we won't see them but if you have too many along this right hand side I recommend picking up some of the dark blue and just kind of getting rid of them so that way and you can also if you have these little spots and that were too bright like mine were you can just kind of dull them down with some of that dark blue this way it ensures that your earth just disappears into the atmosphere and that you don't have these weird um, spots that Michelle told you to make <laughs> <laughs> so just get rid of those <laughs> and then it's I just want it to really just disappear into that atmosphere so once I've got that now I want to add a little bit more blue to the surface of the earth because the oceans are way bluer than what I have here so this is where I'm going to use some of my ultramarine blue with a teeny tiny touch of white and again that's probably too much so I'm gonna dot it off on my paper towel so just a itty bitty bit and this is where I can intensify the ocean blue in here so if you wanted yours to be even more blue than what I'm kind of um, steering you to do you could certainly put some white down on your earth surface or a lighter version and then put the ultramarine blue on top of that but I don't want mine to go that light I just want people to know when they're looking at it that they are looking at something that 
is representational <laughs> of the Earth's surface. So when I think Earth, I think green land, blue water, clouds. That's where my head goes to. Um, but if you feel that you want yours to be different, you can certainly modify yours. So right now, just using a little bit of my ultramarine blue and a teeny tiny touch of white. <laughs> and then again, that's going to give me this bluer appearance than that sky. And I'm going to, while this is kind of drying, my blue areas are drying, and you don't have to do it all over the place, just, you know, maybe more, a little bit more on this left-hand side. Oh, that was too much white. Um, I'm going to have clouds anyways, too. So know that if you did go a little bit lighter than you had anticipated, your clouds will help to um, help to back off any really bright blue stuff. So once I've got that in there, that looks good. Just gonna make sure I got this all the way as far as I want. A little bit over here. Um, while this is kind of drying, I will go into my um, the land areas and develop those a little bit more before I start putting some clouds um, on on the atmosphere of the earth. So there we go. That looks good in through there. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. This is uh, the land area. I don't have mine geographically exactly as it's supposed to be. I'm just having fun here. But if you wanted to make yours exactly the way it's supposed to be, you could certainly do that. But this is where I'm going to be using my green color again. And I'm also going to incorporate maybe some orangey type of tones. So, uh, and maybe some brown kind of colors. So I'm going to use yellow, red, and a touch of white which is going to give me like an orangey kind of color. So just a little bit of those three colors, similar to what we did down here. You can even spin them together on your, on your palette, and this is going to give you some earthier, <laughs> pun intended, um, little tones in through here. You can do them wherever you want. If you feel that you want them in more places than that, feel free to do so. I can now go into that green color so if I want more green, I need to, I need more green. So I'm going more blue and white. And if you wanted this to be, I mean, excuse me, blue and yellow. If you wanted it to be darker, you can make more of your green. Just don't add more white to it. Um, so that would give you a darker version and you can make it as, as dark as you want. So if I want a little bit darker in through here, I'm going to lighten up these guys over here in a minute, but I'm just kind of tapping just some little colors of my of my green in through here. And it's going to appear to be a little bit darker here because that was my first coat on black paint. Um, but just have fun with it. That's what this is all about. I can now take a little bit of yellow and white if I want an even different tone. In, oh, that's too white. A little bit more yellow on that. Um, if I want an even different tone, I can just put a little bit of yellow and white. So again, just have fun with the with this. I, I am not making it, again, geographically perfect. I am just having fun. You can put little islands. You can do whatever makes you happy. <laughs> so once I've got that, now I've got to make my, um, well, let me put a little bit more green open through here. I want to um, put some clouds and stuff around. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. This would definitely benefit you if this was um, not super wet. So if yours is really, really wet right now, you might want to um, wait a minute. But my clouds, I'm going to be doing with, um, I don't want them to go white, white, white. So I'm going to use uh, white with a little bit of um, a touch of my brown just a teeny tiny touch, so white plus a tiny touch of brown. So again, this is what I did on these um, on the bench where I don't necessarily want it to go white, white, white yet. Uh, right off the bat, I want to save room for um, some really light areas. So by not going all the way white first, this will help me to um, to control that. So if I put this lighter up here, and if you run into wet blue, don't worry about it. I'm going to, um, because I'm, I'm probably going to put like a bluish glow on it anyways around the edges. Um, but I just have fun with it. So I'm going to take and I'm going to make some 
um, some clouds <laughs> so you can make like jet streams and have them going um, in circular kind of patterns if you want to. You can um, make them soft if you want to make them even softer just put a little bit of water on your brush and that's going to um, make them more transparent so if you want them to go over the land and look a little bit transparent just put a tiny bit of water on your brush but again less is more the less paint you have on your brush the more control you're gonna have throughout this process so I'm just kind of putting these little lighter areas maybe some coming down in through here and if you go through this process and you're like, oh, it's just too much. I didn't, I didn't control it enough. I've got too, my, my clouds are all super duper white, white, white. You can always come back with that background dark blue and um, get yourself kind of reset into the, um, into the, that darker area. So I'm adding some brighter clouds up and through here in this area and I want a little bit kind of floating over this land mass and the clouds will help you um, hide things <laughs> if you if you did something you're like oh that wasn't that wasn't what I had intended the clouds will help to disguise and hide and you know all that kind of good stuff so as I come as I'm coming towards a place where I'm I'm digging this I do want to add a little bit more um, brightness maybe over here so I'm going to pick up a little bit more white um, and kind of give myself some uh, additional brighter areas over here maybe even amp up this little area in through here I just wanted to read as you know an atmospheric earth where we've got all of these cloud formations and stuff that uh, you know make up the Earth's atmosphere. I'm picking up a little bit of ultramarine blue right now with my dirty brush because I feel um, as though I can have some more clouds over here but with the ultramarine blue it'll help to kind of get this uh, to go uh, to fade off the earth, uh, fade into that darkness so this is just the ultramarine blue plus my dirty brush so that's going to just kind of fade out in through there and if you were feeling like you wanted a little glow around it I just put a little bit of the ultramarine blue on my brush and I can just on my dirty brush and just lightly go around the exterior and that'll put a little bit of an extra glow around it and then I'm thinking that that's looking pretty good again if you feel that you need to add back anything just you know kind of tap in either ultramarine blue or dark blue or Whatever, I just picked up a little bit of the dark blue. Just pop in just a little bit. I feel like I went a little over, a little overkill up and through here. And then we're going to be using our small brush for the next step. So have fun with this. Make it, you know, do any little fiddling that you feel might benefit you. And then you can put this brush away. Take out a small detail brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the lower left or the lower right. I'm going to be using my number two round brush. I think I'm going to um, sign this one in the lower left with black paint. Uh, I like to sign mine with my initials, but you, of course, can sign yours however you want to. You can sign it with your full name, you can sign it with your initials as I do, you can make up a special symbol, you can put the date on it, whatever you want to identify your paintings with is up to you because it is your painting and you get to make those decisions all on your own. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this process. I hope you painted yourself a really cool galaxy style painting and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.